As a coffee roaster and coffee retailer, uh, fair trade means the way that we buy our coffee. And, and through the fair trade system, we are able to buy our coffee directly from small coffee farmers through uh, producer-owned cooperatives. And by doing this, we're able to cut out the middleman trader that's based in New York or London or San Francisco. And it's important to me and to our company to be able to deal directly with coffee farmers and to get to know them and to be confident that we are negotiating in a way that allows us to get great quality coffee at a price that makes sense for us. But at the same time, uh, it gives us confidence that the price that we're paying to these small coffee producers around the world is also fair to them. And that's, that's crucial to, to who we are as a business and it's, it's really a way of thinking on which we've built our business. So at Heine Brothers Coffee, we didn't hear the term fair trade until 1999. We opened our doors for business in October of 1994 and we bought coffee the traditional way. When we needed coffee beans to roast, we would call a broker in New York or San Francisco and we'd place a buy order. We'd want the, one of the best quality coffee we could get at the lowest possible price so that we could get it into Louisville, roast it, mark it up and, and hopefully uh, sell it and make a profit. Uh, we had always built our business on trying to treat people and the planet with respect and dignity, but to be perfectly honest, we weren't thinking about coffee farmers in those first five years of business. Um, so in 1999, when we first heard the term fair trade, we thought, wow, that sounds like who we, we say we want to be. You mean we can deal directly with coffee farmers and buy our coffee from them in a way that's, that's, that's fair to both of us? We, uh, you know, sign us up. But, at the same time, we learned pretty quickly that uh, we're going to have to pay more for coffee through the fair trade system. So we had a, a gut check moment in our company's uh, history where we had to decide, are we going to walk the talk of trying to operate our business in ways that treat people and the planet with respect and dignity and pay people, pay coffee farmers more for their coffee than we had been up to that point? Um, we dipped our toe in the water and we realized pretty quickly, you know, our margins, our profit margins are strong enough to be able to pay a little bit more for coffee. So we were in the right brain space at the right time in the year 2000, late 1999, early 2000, when we were approached by a brilliant uh, man named Bill Harris, uh, based in Americus, Georgia, with an idea to form a buying cooperative, a, a group of like-minded coffee roasters who would pool their buying power to buy coffee directly from farmer groups around the world through the fair trade system. Um, you know, I thought it was a brilliant idea. I wasn't sure it was gonna work, but uh, we immediately said, sign us up. Heine Brothers Coffee was one of seven founding members of Cooperative Coffees, and uh, who'd have guessed it, 20 years later, we are 23 members. We're gonna buy over 250 containers of coffee directly from small farmer groups around the world this year. And, as far as I know, we were the first and maybe still the only 100% fair trade coffee buying group in the world. So I've been, I've been fortunate through Cooperative Coffees to be able to travel all over the world visiting with coffee farmers. And one trip that sticks out in particular was around 2012, I went to Chiapas, Mexico, where as Cooperative Coffees we hosted a gathering of coffee um, buyers from, the, from North America and producer partners from all over uh, Central and South America. We did most of our meeting in, in San Cristobal, a fairly large city in, in Chiapas, uh, in southern Mexico. But we did decide to go out into the countryside for a couple of days to visit with a, a farmer group uh, from whom we buy called Maya Vanique and to, to stay with them in their community, uh, visit their coffee farms, learn a little bit more about their community. To get out there, we hired taxis from San Cristobal, and so we had 15 or more taxis to take our group of 30-ish people uh, out into the countryside. Spent a couple of days out there, it was just really a wonderful experience, and it was eye-opening for my son, who'd never been in the developing world. He was 12 years old at the time. Anyway, a couple days in, it was time to make our way back to San Cristobal, and um, for some reason, we could not get this group of taxis to come back out and pick us up. So we were left uh, standing there working with our hosts uh, at Maya Vanique trying to figure out how we were going to get this group of 30 people back to San Cristobal, a, you know, two, three hour trip through the mountains. Uh, well, the word went out and they quickly hired or, or collected a bunch of farmers and pickup trucks and 
we jumped in the back of pickup trucks and um, uh, I got to stand up in the back of a truck with my 12 year old son next to me driving through the mountains of southern Mexico for um, about a three hour trip back to the big city. Uh, the kind of thing that we'd never get away with doing here in uh, Louisville, Kentucky uh, because it's not safe and somebody might get hurt, et cetera, et cetera. But by God, in southern Mexico, I got to ride in the back of a pickup truck through the mountains for three hours. One of my favorite things about cooperative coffees is that we are committed to building relationships with the small farmer cooperatives from whom we buy, and we're committed to staying in relationship with these groups. Last year, over 90% of the coffee that we bought came from farmer producer groups from whom we've been buying for over five years. Over 60% of the coffee we bought last year came from coffee farmer groups from, with whom we've been in relationship for over 10 years. So, Again, it's a big important part of fair trade. It's not only paying the fair trade price, it's staying in relationship, building relationship, and being there year in and year out.